Righto, guys, thanks for joining the MOBE Australia New Zealand webinar for tonight. Tonight we're lucky enough to have Janelle Livett, who is our resident solo ads expert. She's going to go into a fair bit of detail about solo ads and even better show us how they actually work behind the scenes. So without further ado, Janelle, if you can hear me, I'll hand over to you and kick it off. Thanks, Brendan. Thanks for that. Hi, everybody. As uh, Brendan just said, my name's Janelle Livett, and I sell solo ads, so that's traffic. I've um, been in the business for quite some time now, and um, always find that people have different issues with when they're sending out solos and different expectations of what um, solo ads actually are. So. Basically what a solo ad is, is you send out an email to somebody else's list. So you some, pay somebody to send that email out to their list and the end result is that you build your list and also uh, get some sales so you get your, some income back. Now um, there's certain different people use solo ads for different things um, and different people are taught different things in solo ads but all in all there's a few mistakes, oh, hang on, just excuse me a sec, my computer's jammed up, here we go, a few mistakes um, that can be made. Um, the first one is using the company squeeze page um, and the problem with that is that if everyone uses the company squeeze pages then they get saturated so people get what's called ad blindness. So if you're in a big company such as Moab, like we are, it's best to sort of get a customised thank you page, um, a customised squeeze page to send out, and this way it's going to be new and fresh and people haven't seen it. So make, learn how to make a, a customised squeeze page and send that out. Also, not having an exit redirect. Now, an exit redirect is if people leave your page without putting in their name and email address, They'll be, they'll get sent to an offer. Now it can be the MOBE offer, so they can get sent straight to the MOBE um, sales page and watch the video, or it can be something related to MOBE, say like a list building product or something else. But you can either have another opt-in form there for them to put their email address and name, or it can just be straight to the sales page. This way you get a second chance. So if they don't opt in the first time, they get to have another look. They still might not opt in, but at least they're having another go and usually you'll get about a 25% um, take up rate on the second opt in page. The other thing is that people will send me links and when I go to check them, they're not working um, or they don't go to where they're supposed to go or the email boxes don't, um, you know, you put your name in and the email doesn't go anywhere. So always check that your page is working and your link's working. If you put a tracking link, make sure the tracking link is working and actually you're getting a click when you click it so that it is tracking. Um, the other thing is some people don't even track their link, so they don't know if they send it to a, like a not very high distinguished solo ad seller and they're not tracking it, they might get ripped off, they might not get the clicks uh, and they'll never know because they're not tracking it it themselves. Um, another thing that sort of affects your solo ad success is having too many places for info. So you might have your name, your email, your phone number and you know um, your address maybe. And the problem with that is that people don't want to put in that are, you know, that are, the people that are on solo ad lists because they're sort of um, a bit separate to other lists or you know other sort of traffic. Um, they just want to go into it and have it quickly put their email in and see what's going on behind it. They're impatient, they want to get to what's, what, what they're getting straight away. Or the page is too busy and distracting, so if you've got some video playing in the background that's sort of fast and that, they'll be too busy looking at the video and, and not actually opting in. Now this has probably gone against the grain of everything you've been told, but it actually um, it does affect your opt-ins. So why do some people have great results and go on to make a six-figure income while others fail dismally? Well, there's a few little tweaks that will make the difference and three areas that will make or break your solo ads. The presentation or the funnel system, the follow-up and the types of solo ads being purchased. So how to fix them? Customise the squeeze page so it is not like everybody else's in your opportunity. The solo ad seller's job is to get the emails opened and it's your job to entice the people to fill in their details to see what's on, on the next page. So what you want to do is you want to create curiosity 
so they have no option but to see what's next. So some some squeeze pages, you know, and, and you'll see a lot of them will say make six thousand dollars in three days and stuff like that. And a little bit of it is is a little bit too far fetched, you know. So um, I put one out that said um, read every detail on the next page to blah blah blah, and they usually click through because they want to see what's on that next page. The next fix is to um, offer value. Now, um, I don't want to put Matt's system down, but if you say to people, watch this free video, video and all it is is really a sales page from Mobe, then that's not really value. People will know and respect you if you give them something of value. So maybe some tips and tricks or a free video series or you know, um, an autoresponder series of how to build their list or something like that. Um, then they, they're going to know that you you know you, you provide value and they're going to start listening to you and they're going to start paying attention and then that's when you, you use your um, follow-up series to get them um, in, you know to, to, to sell them what you're offering but they have to know like and trust you first um, you've probably heard this before that you only have one chance to make a first impression. If it's a good one, then there's a good chance you'll establish rapport and have them buying from you. A place um, that I use that's got free webinars is uh, webinar swaps. Now, there's usually a pitch at the end of these, but there's so much value in the videos themselves, uh, in the webinars themselves, that you can't, you know, if you send them via email in your follow-up series and just say, look, there's a pitch at the end, but there's a lot of value in this webinar you know, go and check it out and they'll learn something from the webinar and that's value packed. You can also buy a PLR video series and autoresponder series so you're sending them five or six autoresponders that aren't just pitching them information products all the time. So they so they get they get to trust you and think, oh this person knows what they're talking about and then you become sort of like a leader. Um, the other one is not recouping the cost of the solo ad. And uh, the best way to do this is um, to offer a low cost product after they sign up. So once they've opted in, you can still offer them a free product, but also send them to a low cost product that you can get off um, JVZoo or WSO, that might be nine or ten dollars. If you get three people that buy that, then that's your solo ad cost um, almost paid for. You can get an offer that's relevant to mobile, like on list building or affiliate marketing, or some Facebook marketing products or YouTube products. And you know, there's thousands of them. They're, they're really good value products, and they're only nine or ten dollars WSOs, um, or, which is Warrior special offers from the Warrior forum. And these are guys that are, uh, you know, selling their products in order to build a buyer's list. But the products are very good value, um, so that that will recoup your solo egg costs. Um, then, if you're really techy, you can create your own product and sell this. Um, make it complement MOBE, so you want them to you know, be something like driving traffic or list building or building authority or, or something that's going to enhance the MOBE experience and then add the link to the MTTB as an upsell. So they might go in and grab your product, your free product, which might be a free report of tools to use. The upsell might be you know, selling traffic and then the next upsell might be the MTTB sign up form. So it sort of flows through. Um, and that also gets you your money back for your solo ad. And the last thing is that most people don't, you know, they'll follow up new subscribers by pitching them the same old original offer over and over. So their subscribers get burnt out because they're seeing the same offer over and over and pretty soon they unsubscribe or totally ignore any additional email messages. So mix it up a bit and diversify and of course add value. Um, I usually send people to really good blog posts, the same with your Facebook pages, you know, if you do a blog post, post it on your Facebook page and really get your group, um, your tribe, you know, uh, respecting you. I've got a Facebook group where we all, I, we're, when people join my list, I send them over to the Facebook group and put some good things on there as well and try and keep the spam off of it, it's always a problem. So how do solo ad vendors actually build their lists? Well, a lot of them buy solo ads from other solo ad vendors. Uh, they'll b build it by pay-per-click traffic, pay-per-view traffic, product sales, Facebook marketing, click banking, which is they'll, um, they'll bank 100 clicks with somebody else. So they just basically swap, the, they'll bank 
100 clicks, so they'll collect 100 clicks from one marketer and the other marketer will collect 100 clicks and pay them back. So that's kind of like free, uh, free solo ad or ad swaps where they'll send out one email, um, one solo ad vendor's email to their list and opposite and so they get their, they build their list that way. Um, most of them add somewhere around 500 to 1,000 subs a week and they'll usually use their own swipe because they know what their subscribers open. So just remember again, it's, only, it's their job to get the email open and the link in the email clicked on. The, um, it's up to you to make sure your squeeze page is, um, is inviting so that they actually put their details in. So a few things that you need to keep in mind when you're buying a solo ad. Never buy a solo ad unless you've spoken or communicated with the person you're buying from. So some people, some of the solo ad vendors have just got sites where you go on, you book, you go to a calendar, you pay and you book. Um, and a lot of the times the, the traffic will get sent out and you won't have anything to do with them. That's not that great. What's your best to do? is to actually ask them what sort of people they have on their list. Are they biz opportunity people? Are they internet marketers? Is it full of freebie seekers? Is it a buyer's list? How they've built their list? Make sure they ask to see your squeeze page so they can see if it's going to convert and check that it's actually working. Also ask them how long since they've sent a similar offer out. Um, I do a lot of solo ads for, for MOB and other big companies and I always ask them how long it's been since they've actually promoted that product and if it's only been last week or something then we don't look at it. Um, always look for testimonials and scam reports. There's a few um, Facebook groups out that have um, spam reports in. I was actually looking at a guy today and then went around Facebook and found that he'd scammed quite a few people so he quickly went off my list. Um, there's a solo soloadsx.com is a great place where he's got a heap of solo ad vendors that they've got their price, if people, how many, what the percentage of the opt-in was and if they had any sales. So you can um, go through that list and, and check them. And then there's Solo Checker, which is you can just go along and choose your vendor and there's lots of testimonials and lots of information about the vendors. But even though there is lots of information, there's still a place for you to contact the um, vendor before you actually pay for the solo ad. And then the fast Facebook groups, one of them is Traffic Masters. So there's lots of places for you to do your due, due diligence with, um, you know, so you don't get ripped off. Um, now after your, your clicks have been delivered, the solo ad vendor should give you a report. And the report will have the number of clicks and what percentage were tier one. And tier one means top countries such as the US, Canada, United Kingdom, New Zealand and Australia and what they do is with their trackers they're able to filter out the clicks that they, that, you know, that are from other countries so they can filter out and make sure that you get exactly what you're paying for if they're T1 clicks. They usually charge more for T1 clicks because they might have to say, say you bought um, 100 T1 clicks, they might have to send 170 clicks to get the 100 T1 clicks and um, you, so you pay extra for that. Now I just wanted to show you um, the, one of the reports that you'd get if you bought, if you actually bought a solo ad from me. Um, this is from Quality Click Control. What I do is I set all your links up. Let me see if I can find it. We set all the links up along here, as you can see. I've got people's links in here. This gives me the tracking links. And then when, when they're full, it goes down to the next one, so it can be running through. Um, and then for the report it sends out, it'll tell you how many raw clicks. Now raw clicks are just how many times they've actually clicked on the link. Um, it doesn't matter if they've gone back and clicked on the links, this is all the clicks that they've um, actually put on that link. And unique click, clicks are individual clicks, so they've only ever clicked it once. So sometimes you can get uh, some of the solo ads that um, I've had some that have had like 450 raw clicks but only 200 unique clicks. And I'm like, what's going on here? And they've always got an excuse but I never use them again if that's, that's what happens um, because there's obviously something wrong there. Uh, and a lot of them are sending a lot of mobile clicks at the moment too. 
So as you can see down here, it's got where the countries are. So 85 of the clicks came from the United States, 5 came from Canada, 4 from Great Britain, 2 from New Zealand, 2 from Malaysia, and I'm going to run out of what these countries, oh that's Japan. <laughs> I'm not really sure what all those countries are. Um, this was sent a while ago, so that won't turn up. But these are all the um, IP addresses that they've come from. And here you can see it's desktop, mobile, desktop, desktop, um, iPad, mobile. So you can see where your traffic is coming from. And a lot more is coming from mobile traffic. So that's telling us to make sure that our um, pages are, are actually mobile optimised. So um, now I suppose I'll ask if anyone's got any questions. Basically, yep, um, there's a lot of solo people there that um, I, I had some, there's a lot of bot traffic and it had been coming through Skype that someone picked up. I have actually haven't got the um, system to filter out the bot traffic at the moment. I'm saving up to buy that, but that'll filter out which one's a bot. Most of the people I buy from, they've got the filter system. So, um, because I'm in a couple of high-ranking um, solo ad vendors and we're in a kind of group where we get discounted clicks and what they sell through other places um, and they've all been built, they've built their list from selling products so they're fairly high-quality subscribers. Um, I'm kind of safe. It's only when I decide that someone contacts me and wants like 35 cent clicks and I go, ugh, don't know. But anyway, and then I have to find two clicks and then it all goes bad and I shouldn't even look at it anyway. But um, we all get caught sometimes. So if anyone's got any questions or if I've talked, I'm sorry if I spoke really fast. I do that sometimes. I know oh, that's all right, Janelle. Um, Lee's asked a question here. Do you help with squeeze pages and give feedback on them? Yes, definitely do. Um, I think Brendan set up a solo ad with me and he sent his squeeze pages through and I gave him a bit of advice um, and uh, we changed it around a little bit. Um, some people don't even know how to build a squeeze page so I can offer that service as well. Um, the same with finding products. If you want to find products for upsells or even as an affiliate, I can point you in the right direction for that. Um, and then if things aren't working or you haven't got them hooked up in your in, with your autoresponder. Oh, that's the other important thing too, guys, is if you're sending out a solo ad, make sure your double opt-in is turned off, okay? Um, there's some people that say leave your double opt-in on, but with solo ads, turn them off because you want those subscribers. Um, and a lot of the time when you have double opt-in on, the double opt-in email will go to spam and they never see it. So make sure that's always turned off if you're sending out a solo ad. That's really vitally important because you can lose lots of subscribers that way. So yes, I do give advice on squeeze pages. <laughs> Righto. Guys, if you've got any other questions, type them in, please. Um, I do have a question, Janelle, if I may. Everyone talks yep. about top-tier countries, you know, the ones you've identified, you know, Australia, New Zealand, mm -hmm. US, whatever they are. What about specifically targeting other countries, countries that are not necessarily top tier, but you know someone might have a specific reason to say target certain Asian countries or certain European countries? Can you break it down to that level? Um, with the the quality click control, I can filter just those clicks out. But once again, you're, you're looking at um, how many clicks you have to go through before you can actually filter the amount that you need to get, say, 100 clicks from India or 100 clicks from Malaysia. Right. Do you know what I mean? So clicks in filtered, you'd have to pay more because of all those clicks that have to be filtered out. Uh, I, unless, there's probably a way to redirect them to other places. Um, yeah, I haven't actually ever been asked to do that. When I, you know, with the quality click control, you can filter just clicks from this the top tier country, so you should be able to filter, say if somebody had a Spanish landing page or something like that, you could just say, okay, I just want clicks from Spain to come here. Well, that's That the, might take you, yeah. That's the sort of yeah. scenario I'm talking about. If you've got a landing page in a certain language and you want to target the countries that speak those languages, what I'm getting at, for example, is if, you, if, if I pay, you know, if I buy 100 top tier clicks for more than what I'd pay for, you know, regular clicks, um, and the solo provider's got to over deliver to get my hundred top tier clicks. Could I say, okay, I want 
a certain number of clicks from a Southeast Asian country, for example, and pay for those clicks and whatever else is delivered is just excess, but mm. I'm paying based on the number of clicks from the particular markets that I'm after, if you get what I mean, as opposed to just paying for the entirety of the clicks until I yeah. get the I suppose in order to do that, you'd have to have a bit like you know our co our co-op that we've got going. Um, if say I've got that many clicks, that many people in there, and then the last you could put another six people in there and just filter out the clicks that weren't that were for those particular countries. But what I'm saying is, it might not get filled on the first run through. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, you could have that your link sitting at the bottom of six or seven solo um, solos that I send out, and just filtering in those clicks. So it may take longer to fill the, the order, but you could still get the same result. Because yeah, if that makes sense. Right. Okay. Because all the top two countries will be going to those first links that are in that rotator, and then all the other ones that were from India would go into your link, and then the rest oh. would get redirected to whatever link that. I put in to catch the rest okay. of the links so they're not yep. wasted. I'm with you. I get I, I get what you're saying now. Mm. Okay. Cool. Um that's probably me done for questions. Does anyone else have any questions if they want to un think, if they want to unmute them? I think too, Brendan, sorry, yeah. I'll just say something. Yeah, I yeah. think too, Brendan, is that um people's expectations of when they purchase solo ads are, are very high. Mm -hmm. Um and the thing is that solo ads are great for traffic. Um, and to build your list, but it's up to you to build that relationship with the list. Um, and that's why things like that easy sales system, if they opt into that, then the sales system takes over. The same with MOBE, but they've actually got to buy something with MOBE before the sales system takes over. So that's why you're best to flag the clicks before they get there. So, you know, and not depend on Matt's team because they're not, they may, opt in but they're not buying something so the phone team doesn't follow them up if that's my understanding. Mm. So it's up to people to nurture that list, learn to be trusted and then actually, um, you know, then the sales will start coming in. And that's what I find, you know, like um, I've got a heap of reports out with different links in them that go to different products um, and I give them away and it's lots of value and then people, you know, sort of go, oh, well, she knows what she's thinking and then they actually buy the products that are in your in your reports and things like that, so you have income coming in, and um, you can you know you can still direct them to Mo, um, you know, and tell them all about Mo and put in in um, testimonials and the videos that are in Mo back office and and so you know you could do it the easy way, you can do it the hard way sort of thing. But you've got to nurture them. I think you think people that buy solo ads just expect to get sales straight away, yeah. and um, sometimes it happens, but. Um, it's like anything, you'd have to have seven touches or something before people really um, start to dive in sort of thing. Yep. I know this is a MOB call, however, um, I'm sure you have experience with a lot of other systems than MOB and a lot of us, you know, or some of us are in different companies and different systems as well as MOB. I'm just curious, do you have any sort of thoughts on what companies, what systems, what networks, whatever it is, um, tend to be converting better or resulting in better opt-ins at the moment? You know, which ones are the good ones? Um, well, I'm in Dean Holland's iPro partner and his first product is $19.95. Um, I find that sort of price range and under is, is people will jump in and buy. Um, for, I've had I've had a couple of sales at, at $42 level, which is I've got an Alex Malav sales funnel and they come in the front end with three products and then it's a series of autoresponders and they go into different funnels and different links and I got another sale from that today. Um, but yeah, like people, you, you talk to Samit and that, I, they seem to get lots of sales. I'm not, not sure if they're using solo ads or what. I do remember him saying that he did a deal with, you know, to get his, mm. sol his um, first sales. So there are, you know, I just think to use solo ads to get people into your funnel but sell them low price products to get your money back on the solo ads. So you're still building your list, you're still providing them with value, you send them emails every day to, so they get to know you um, and provide them with value 
and then your, your sales will come. Hmm. What about, um, I know we've had this discussion at length in this last week and I'm sure other people may want to know this information. You know, we're taught, in, certainly in mode, but in the industry to split test everything and, you know, and, and, and see what performs better and do tweaks and sort of, sort of get yourself into, you know, putting more resources towards what's converting better. How many mm. clicks do you recommend as a minimum um, to send to a particular link to test it in the context of a split test, but also the other way around? Um, the maximum, you know, at the point where people are starting to waste their money, in a, you know, it gets to the point where it's not really test, starting to become a serious end. Do you have any guidelines on what the minimum and the maximum people should test with are? I usually say between 100 and 200 to test, so if you did 200, do 100 to each link. Um, and then the one that you converted more, You'd keep that one and and then trial another one. It's a bit. Who was um, the gentleman that did the split testing? Um, and he was showing us what to do uh, a couple of weeks ago. Sorry, I forgot. Last week, was. you mean? Oh, that was that, uh, that was Jock. Week, that was Jock. He was no, um, no, no, no. Um, he, remember, he he didn't get there the first time. He'd come back the next week, and he did all the split testing. But yeah. you know, you can usually do it with you could do it with a hundred clicks, but um, it's a whole science. Like <laughs> there's different ways of testing it and that. But uh, you know, with a hundred clicks, you get a percentage of how it converted. Um, yeah. yeah. One one of the things that I'm curious about because I know you're I know you've got a, a a list of a certain size yourself, but I also get the impression that the majority of your business is obviously as a broker you know, through to a, a small number of other solo providers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I come, I, okay, I've got a series of landing pages I want to split test. I come and I buy 100 clicks from you to 50 there and 50 there to split those. Um, yep. And then I want to, you know, take the better performing one of those and add another one into the mix and I might send 50 there and 50 there. Obviously, the quality of the traffic and the solo provider itself is a big you know, big part of this because, you know, different providers have different qualities of traffic, I suppose. Yep. Can I say to you, I want all my traffic for this process from the one solo provider? Yep. Or, yep. Or, does not, or does it not work like that because I might be sending too much traffic to the one offer, for example, in a short period of time, which is something well, you said before can be anything. Okay. Well, Brendan, you've got to realise that these guys that I'm dealing with have got lists of 10, 20, 30,000 people on their lists. Yep. So if you're testing 100 clicks Not or 300 deal. clicks, that's only a drop in the ocean as yep. far as their list is concerned. Um, if they're getting um, good results from their, the first 200 clicks that you sell, definitely go back and use their traffic for, the, for, the, you know, for all your testing. Um, and but then yeah, so if it's little amounts, but if you're testing a thousand clicks, then you'd probably use different providers. Mm. Yeah. But you need people that are getting fresh subs all the time, that are always building their list. Yeah. And and you know, most of these guys are because they 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 burn out like the they, they drop out, they unsubscribe so fairly regularly. So they've got to get subscribers all the time. So um yeah. Right, and that's different. Yeah, so you get different results from those sorts of lists than you would, and they've got their own, you know, protected list that they keep protected that they don't send all these solo ads to. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them will send out that, um, you know, your email to their list if they don't do it regularly, like every like every day they won't be sending stuff, promos out. But yeah, sometimes you can get them, and they'll um, just send your one-off thing, like once once a week or something. Right. Yeah. And they cost they cost lots of money. Those sorts of solos. Yeah. In your experience, I know Samith has um, spoken about this before, and I remember Ernest Lim spoke about this before as well. And he said there's a bit of a danger with some more um, unscrupulous solo providers, where they can send good traffic for people who are sort of doing a smaller test run. And then, you know, they sort of get them in and they come back and they order a thousand clicks, say, um, you know, and then they get the crap traffic for a thousand clicks. Is there any any anything to that? 
or do you find a good solo provider will stick to the good traffic or do you recommend ch smaller chunks all the time? Well, that's, that's the thing. If Once you get a good solo ad provider, you want to be using them quite regularly because what will happen is if you use one, and, and it, you know, it's not everybody, but if you send somebody says, okay, I want to do a test for 100 clicks and they send it out, they get really good results, but then they want 1,000 clicks and their list can't, you know, there's no way they could get 1,000 clicks out of their list. Mm. So they'll go and buy them from someone else right. and their results won't be the same. And that's usually what happens. Okay. Um, and they may go to someone else that, because they haven't had to pay for the clicks that they've generated from their list, now they have to pay for them and they have to make a, a um, you know, they have to make some money out of it. So the clicks they're buying are going to be less quality, you know, like 40 cent clicks instead of 80 cent clicks than the ones that they might have got from the list that they've grown from products they've sold or something like that. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Yeah. So, but, you know, some, I mean, but it's not all of them and that's why you've got to be really careful when you're buying solo ads. And I've been caught myself. We have gone and there's been really good testimonials and you've gone and bought the, the traffic and it's come back and it's been a lot of bot traffic. And I've managed to get refunds because I've managed to prove it. But, um, you know, like the normal, any average person that's bought a silo ad for the first time and wouldn't have a clue that it was bot traffic and, you know, wouldn't um, get any opt-ins or anything. Like I had one solo that's ad where point, I got... Janelle. Yeah, like I was, I bought a solo <laughs> for myself, and it come back at like 98% tier one traffic, and I had one opt-in, and I'm going, uh, <laughs> this isn't right, guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, um, you've got to be, you've got to know your, how the solo guys have actually built their lists and things, and that's why now, I, you know, and I was actually running around and buying these cheap clicks, but it's just not worth your reputation. You know, you've got to yeah. make sure that. And and it's and I'm forever running around trying to save the reputation of solo ads. <laughs> like if I find out that I the people are selling clicks and selling clicks and selling clicks, buying them selling and so they're up to the third vendor by the time they get purchased. You just go, hey guys, you know this isn't going to get this, the industry anywhere. So yeah, yeah, I should spend less more time building my business instead of saving <laughs> saving the world from bad solo vendors. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but the reputation of the industry affects your business too because you know, you're in the industry. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah look, does anyone else have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask before we, we wrap this formal part of the, the call up. Yeah, I do, Brenda. Just to follow on what you're saying, Janelle, with regards to um, the bot traffic, I'm, I'm noticing now that in my autoresponder, my, op my opening rate is, is getting lesser and lesser because obviously like I'm trying to give them some content but I'm just finding that a quarter of them are only opening it up. Would you say that it's only fair to say that's probably bot traffic there? Well or not just, so much. Just the stale, stale, they're just getting stale. Well yeah, what, which autoresponder are you using? I use GetResponse. Okay, do you know how to see who hasn't opened an email in the last three months yes, or something? Yes, I can see. I can yeah. see them. They're not opening them up. Oh, why? Yeah. Just, well, my suggestion would be to send them an email that says, okay, um, anyone that doesn't open this email, you'll be deleted from my list. Offer them some sort of um, bonus if they do open it. Um, and then if they don't, get rid of them and stop. Sorry, I missed miss what you're saying. Sorry, Janelle. Okay, basically what you do is anyone that, that hasn't opened an email yep. for quite a while, just send them. You should be able to segment them to just send them an um, email. Yeah. And say, um, you know, you haven't responded to my emails for a while. You will be deleted from my list. Um, please, uh, they can either, you know, unsubscribe. open the email and click on it or unsubscribe yeah. or, you know, give them an incentive to stay on your list and okay. say, you know, um, here's a bonus report or something. Okay. And, yeah. I'll try that. Um, I, some, one of the guys I was on did that not long ago. I mean, oh, I do, you know, I like his emails, but what I usually do is I, I gather them all up and then I'll read a whole heap all at once. And he's Sometimes you can't tell if they're reading them or not clicking on them. Sometimes you can view them before you actually read them, if you know or not. It depends on um, their email, what they're using, yeah. I suppose. Well, they should, uh, they should. Well, it's ones that don't open them altogether that you, um, 
That's right. You can usually see them, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's and um, yeah, because you're paying. Get rid of them or. Yeah, because you're you're paying for your subscribers, yeah. and um, you should really rinse your your list out because what ha and this just happened recently to me was um, I wanted to set something up with Get Response and API where they were added automatically and they said oh no your your um, open rates are too low because they were only about eight uh, percent or something like that so they wouldn't do it and I had to go through and and I got rid of like a thousand people off the list it was just crazy it was a cleansing. But yeah, um, but, and they'd never open an email, you know. And you will get that traffic with solo ad traffic. Um, click happy people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and it, like, it gets people. The, the guys say that people buy products, and half of them never even open them. Never mind um, take action on them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's a really high percent too. So you think about people that opt into your list and never take action. There's probably a high percentage of that as well. But, yeah. yeah. The other question I've got is, um, Jock sort of helped me with this one. I was double opting with, with GetResponse. Um, yep. The thing is, I suppose my concern is that GetResponse is so so tough with regards to the Canadian um, tier um, clicks. Mm -hmm. they, they actually prefer the double opt-in um, for legal purposes, I understand. What's your Have you got a policy, policy attached to any, to any of your squeeze pages? Um, yes, I do. I do. Okay. Well, that's the, the single opt-in. I mean, it, if you're only using it for solo ads, single opt-in, it shouldn't be an yep. issue. Okay. That's, like that's if, all you, if you've got a blog that's and good. stuff like that, and it's double opt-in, then that's okay. You okay. know what I mean? But just for solo ads, there's no point because they opt in, and then you send them the confirmation, and they never ever come. You know, they never ever find that email, or they've had. You know, they just never come back. Yeah, I've so, tested them myself. I mean, but you're right. You just lose three quarters of them. You don't get a quarter. Yeah, especially with Gmail now, where it's got you know like the three different things. Yeah. And plus your spam folder, it could end up in any of those. Okay. Good point. They actually see it. Yeah. All right. Does anyone else got any questions? Yep, yeah, guys, jump in if you do. That's great. Who's giggling? <laughs> I don't know. Right, I'll take that as a, um, if no one else is going to jump in, I'll take that as a no. Um, Janelle, do you want to plug your services? And you're also talking about um, a free report we can have access to as well. Um, but someone's typed in how they contact you to use your services as well. So if you want to give yourself a plug, please do. Okay, I'll, I'll put my um, solo ad. The best way is to actually contact me on, on Facebook because um, then I can give you the, um, oh, that's not right. <laughs> Let me remember my, uh, I can give you, you know, first time discount and help you out with your lead pages and all that sort of stuff before you actually, um, you know, we go down that road of buying it. Uh, did that go through? That's my... Well, SoloAdBroker.biz is my um, website where you'll find all my testimonials and my sales page. I've also got the Solo Ad Survival Guide. It is I did put a link to it in the working group, um, and you can just download that. It's uh, no opt-in or anything required, um, and have a read it. That's covered. Most of it's covered in. Some of it's covered. There's a whole lot more in there as well. Um, and if you join my list, I've also got a whole heap of other um, freebies as well. But um, yep. I've got a blog at JanelleLivett.com as well, so um, right. yeah, lots of places to connect with me. Um, mm -hmm. If you need any help at all, just give me a yell. Yep. Um, well, I'll just reiterate yeah, those. Especially with free products and stuff like that, you know, to give away or even the products to upsell to on JVZoo or WSOs and stuff like that, I can help out. Yep. So I'll just reiterate that because there are some people who will be getting this recording who are not in the, the, the Australian New Zealand group. So I'll just reread that it's soloadbroker.biz um, yep. or they can contact you on Facebook to access your services and get that free report. Yep, not a problem. Righto, if no one else has any questions, we'll wrap it up. Um, thank you very much, Janelle. It's been fabulous. Um, thank really, you, Brendan. Really Happy to uh, help you all out. Yep, yep. It's, a, it's a minefield out there if you... Yeah, yeah, so I hope I've made it a little bit more clearer for you all. Yeah. For you all. Well, no worries. Thanks, Janelle. We'll